mass communication from Benway State, Benway State University, Macaulay. He also earned master's in science degree in marketing and MBA in marketing, both from the University of Nigeria, Nsuka, and PhD in business administration. He is a fellow of both the National Institute of Marketing of Nigeria and the Institute of Public Relations, NIPR. He enjoys public affairs discussion and engagements. The acting director, very senior officers here present. Officers, please join me as we welcome our guest speaker with a resounding round of applause to the podium to deliver his lecture. <laughs> Today is a great day. It is the day that the Lord has made. And we are to rejoice and be glad in it. So specifically, not for any other thing, I am deeply humbled and honored to be part of this gathering. Whatever God destined that it would happen, it will surely come to pass. This specifically to the acting director, Colonel Seke, and all the officers that are here, that we are having this kind of engagement. It's an interesting engagement. We said, and I'm very, very happy with Commodore Dahu. I listened attentively to his comments and all this. Things. What we will be doing today, it is not just with the LSA, this is training, and so we are going to embark on training. So there is what, while we were taking our tea over there, we were talking about something that he mentioned, and I'm going to use it here. And what is that? K. P I. K P I. What do we mean by K P I? Key performance indicators. Every individual has his own key performance indicators. When you fail to have your own key performance indicators, then that is the beginning of the challenges. And the Nigerian army. The armed forces as a whole, I must make it very, very clear that you are indeed the major, the binding force of this country that we have today, Nigeria. That statement needs to be noted and needs to be recognized and documented. The effort of the armed forces in the corporate existence of Nigeria is indeed, as you understand that. When this topic was given to me, information operations, galvanizing citizen support towards successful military operations, Nigeria, or rather the whole world is a dynamic world. And because we live in the dynamic world, and I'm so happy when the director was uh, saying that the army of today is not the army of yesterday, that this is not where we were before. And because of that, things are always changing and they will continue to be changing. And I'm very happy with what the political science professor talked about and all this about the conflict. We need conflict for us to move on. It is when you have a conflict, when you stand at a least, you need to have conflict for you to now move from that position to the next position. So we need conflict. But the most important thing is that we have various type of conflict. We have what we call the intrapersonal conflict, the interpersonal conflict, and then the group conflict or intergroup conflict. If there are challenges, so we are going to look at this in various dimensions. We have people from the various divisions that are here. Some people have 
some from brigades, some people are from some battalions here. Looking at the various levels and the various segments that are there, we now have to start asking ourselves what are our own KPI in the general area that I am. If I'm in the battalion, what are my KPI? If I'm the, at the brigade level, what are my KPI? If I'm the, uh, at the division level, what are my KPI? So in other words, we need to have measuring you know, instrument to confirm that whatever we are asked to do, we really get them at the right time. Now, the other one is the citizen support towards successful military operation. It's very unfortunate, and that is the gap that we have observed, that the citizens fail to understand of your responsibility, and today, all sort of perception and impression are being given to the military or to the armed forces. What are we supposed to do? We have to embark on a drastic you know, attitudinal reorientation. Drastic attitudinal reorientation. And I'm very happy that the cream of officers that are here, of today's officers, you now have an excellent career path in the military. Some people never had the kind of career path that we are now having today. It's a result of what? Revolution. What are we talking about? This kind of situation. Changes and all that. So we need to understand that when we're talking about development in our society, is these are various evolutionary things that have been coming up and all these things. Evolution. Before we're not using hands, but today we're not using hands. Today, before we, before before you need to communicate to somebody, you have to move to one to another place or even have the card. Around. But today, you can communicate with people in various dimensions. So what are our challenges? As public relations officers that you are, as public relations practitioners that you are, as information managers that you are, as attitudinal you know, officers that you are, there are things that we need to look at critically. And what are those things that we are now talking about? In view of the proliferation of social media, it will not even take 24 hours for an incident that occurred in one part of the country to be spread around the globe. So, what are we talking? Things that, I mean, you can see Mr. President is already in Japan. He visited Japan and all these things. But the next thing we started seeing that, oh, there are some people that are out to go and ensure that this visit will not be successful. If you notice some kind of pictures on one of social media, they were announced, okay, this person is now with him. And quite some of you saw it on the social media. The whole thing is to denigrate. So, what are we lacking? What some of us are lacking, that word that some of us are lacking, and I must make it clear to you today, is we do not have patriotism attributed up. We are not, some of us are not patriotics. We, some of us are not patriotics. Even the singing of our national anthem, that people need to be fair and be attentive. Why the national anthem is being, you know, on, some people will be moving around in the street. This happens even in our various levels of engagements and all the That I want you to look at that's the beginning of the challenges. The national anthem. Because you need to understand, you go to other parts of the world and all these things, because it's not going to say, are we, are we Americans? Why well, must we follow what America is? But is that is the beginning of the whole effort. Patriotism. But when, to us here, when that is on, that is when we'll be moving about and we'll be making noise left and right. And all of so that is to tell you the beginning of the challenges. So we need to have that attitudinal orientation. How many of us will even do see the national anthem? How many? Ask your child or daughter to sing the national anthem to you. Can she sing the national anthem? That is true. For us to, for us to look at the eroding of our social values and our level of patriotism. Mm -hmm. How many of them? So these are the key issues that we have to look at today. And now, because of the recent happenings in the country, I've painted the Nigerian army in battle. Yes. And I'm very, very happy. That's why 
I'm so happy that I came early and all these things. And, uh, the comments and all this, uh, I'll be making reference to some of those comments. Come on, that we talked about the challenges from the world going is even the, at the recruitment level. At the recruitment level. Who are the people that were not recruited into this strategic you know, level of engagement in our country? But I don't blame you people that are here. Some of these issues are coming from the people that are part of the major challenges that we have in our society today. The note is from this chief. The note is from this senator. The note is from the House of Reps. The note is from National Assembly. There is a, in fact, there is a special list. They even make it an honorable list today. And so when you get the list, you no longer have any choice. So what you do is to try as much as you can to engage those people. And by the time they get there, they cause this kind of havoc and there is nothing you can do. There are limitations. We turn up for everything that some level that we're not supposed to be, we're able to get to that situation and all that. The Nigerian police, the civil defense and the people that are here, for those of you that are here, Take this discussion as the train the trainer engagement. Believe me, honestly speaking, you are indeed a spectacular individual. But what we need to do, and that's why we are talking about this KPI. So the army must therefore make conscious effort to regain the goodwill of citizens. We started this way, and I'm happy with what some of us were talking about earlier. I started with the word patriotism. So if there are clear issues about the way things are to be respected, that will be clear. Before, when an army man is coming to enter a vehicle or another area, they have been, they have been allowed to enter in a very respectful manner. But today what we see, struggling, is not your turn in my talk, it's not your turn in my own talk. That ought not to be. You need to respect that coat of arms, that, that uniform that the person is putting on. So these are the challenges that are leading to the kind of situation we have in our country. I talked about the recruitment because, of the, the, because there are bad eggs. It is, the, it is the activity, the action of the bad eggs that now rub off on the whole image. It's not the whole people in the police, or it's not the whole people in the army, it's not the whole people in the custom, it's not the whole people in immigration. Now, getting back to what I earlier said, and uh, info, propaganda, info propaganda. The war out there, the war out there, old friend, a world war, and it's not about who's got the most bullets. Today is not about who got the most bullets. No, it's about who controls the information. And that's what we're telling you. It's about who, who controls the information. Because it is the information that is it's all about the information. So if you are in a strategic information management role, you have a lot of things before you. And let me make it clear to you. It is your own role. It is your own call. That is the major call. Because what you say can affect everybody. It is your own role. And that is what is the one you need to be careful. Because an individual can just from nowhere create something and now send it. And you will be sent left and looking at the kind of a follower, that's when the body will generate into so many munitions. Munitions of the mind. For to win 100 victories in 100 battles is not the admin of skill. It's not how powerful your skills will work. To subdue the enemy without fighting is the admin of skill. The way you can do to subdue the enemy without you even switch any bullet or whatever, that is the main skill. And that skill can come from where? Within those people that are within the information management. It's not where you have your bullet, okay, uh, the, ammunition, uh, the, the whole ammunition is finished. No, 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 that, that, that's not what we are talking about here. 
and that's the more reason why you need to look at your own directorate, your own call by the grace of God, that is a strategic one. It's a strategic one. Alright? And a strategic, because it is not those other ones, that machine entry and fire, no, 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 no. Can we now be so creative? Can we now be so creative to now start thinking of what to do this way? Because why do you see these other people now have been disturbing us over time? It is their, their own way of using the information. And so they have their own people left and right and all that. So to subdue the enemy without fighting is the admiral of skill. And so that is what we want to have an attitudinal reorientation of our psyche. So today in our directorate of public relations in the army or whatever, we should ask that where do we have pockets of issues? Have we done an, an audit of where we have pockets of issues in the country, within the geopolitical zones? So okay, we have these issues in this area. So let us start thinking of that kind of skill, the information skill that can be created in such a way that there will be a way to doubt whatever that is there. It is real. When we now look inward to think of that skill. War, peace. Or what in the global war on terror? The infantry in trench warfare will in future be, take, will be taken by revolutionary propaganda to break down the enemy psychologically before the armies begin to function at all. And that is where you have your skill. That is where you have your skill. You need to understand there are various calls that you have and all this in the engineer call, the infantry call, the medical call, and whatever that are there. But the issue now is that there are ways you now have to look at it because where we are heading to. We are coming from where, yes, it is, where is your God, where is your God, where is your God? We now want those commanders, those fighters, with their ideas, having a creative ability, to now think, start to of what to do. Something is not happening, but all of a sudden, somebody will want to create a situation, just because you want to There are people who are good at that, and they are also being paid. Some individuals are on the payrolls of some multinational for this kind of situation. I want all of us to start looking at it at that level. Some, when there is peace and stability, it is the downfall of some people's business. So that business needs to now, you know, be reawakened. So you have to get agents that will now indeed propel the promotion of their business. So we have to start thinking of those kind of situations at that level. Agenda for the discussion now. Some concepts and definitions, components of official influence, public diplomacy, psyops, psychological deception, public information, perception, management, strategic communication, some diagnosis about what we have done wrong and how to put it right. Looking at this agenda that are here, you see that we don't have bullets there. But those things where we're packing them very, very well, completely change the whole you know, environment. And so the today uh, officers in the information division, in the public relations division, now have to start looking at this kind of development. We have this dreaded later P. What is this dreaded later P? The dreaded later P that we have is propaganda. Now to talk about any information, any information, ideas, doctrines, or special appeals disseminated to influence the opinions, emotions, attitudes, or behavior of any specified group in order to benefit the sponsor, either directly or indirectly. That's propaganda. That's propaganda. So how effective are we in the use of this? Because to use propaganda, you need to be creative. So that you don't become branded as somebody who is in a different that You need to be creative. This is what is happening in the social area. Oh, they say they have arrested some people. 
But they said they have killed some people. What are we doing in those kind of situations? Because we, as somebody who is into public relations management, you, you are a management person. So in other words, you need to be highly you know, uh, sporadic in your decision taking and you need to try as much as you can to have some sense of judgment. Propaganda is only designed to benefit source more than the recipient. The person who is generating it wants to benefit, and that is the more reason why he would want to do it that way. So there are individuals in our country that are paid agents or some individuals, some of us, like in various parts of the world, that their own focus is to see how they are working on this kind of destabilization. So their own KPI is how effective are they in causing more havoc in some areas. I said everybody has no key performance indicators. So they have their own KPI. So their own KPI is to ensure that. Is there some relative peace or not? No. No, please see. Let's see how we can have more situation. So when do you think we can trigger this? When, when, okay, we are not the first quarter, second quarter. Oh, Salah is coming. Christmas is coming. Oh, this is coming. Okay, within Salah, okay, let's see how some people can do. Well, position in some areas. How far were you able to trigger out your own? Yes, so we were able to do it there. What was it we able to do? There are sponsors for those kind of activities. It's not just, it was all deliberate. We have hard war, hard, hard, hard power. Hard power, the actual use of military force, economic sanction, coercive diplomacy. Hard power is the ability to get others to do what they otherwise would not do through threats or rewards. Whether by economic carrots or military sticks, the ability to coerce or coerce has long been the central element of power. We should equally have the excuse to think of when to use that. Then we have what we call the soft power. Soft power is the ability to get desired outcomes. So you can see where we are so as Public relations and uh, practitioners with information management and all these things, because we are there to see how this are. You can also start thinking of how you can effectively use this in, in getting something done. So, is the ability to get desired outcomes, because others want what you want, it is the ability to achieve goals through interaction and through attraction rather than coercion. It works by convincing others to follow or getting them to agree to norms and institutions that produce the desired behavior. The challenges we'll be having in our society and all these things. Oh, and honestly speaking, I will continue to say the military are indeed indisputable force in Nigeria. The challenges we are going through, and one day Professor to, uh, mentioned education. Our level of education is low. How many people have access to education? Now you want to travel to some part of the country because you now stop to eat. Before you start even putting your hands in it, somebody is already looking at the way you are putting the clothes in it. Because he's watching to see whether you are going to release, still leave some reverence in the bed or not for him. So these are the things we see in our society. And that is the one why we say that now those kind of people, because they are here, what are we going to do to solve that kind of because it's, it's something that is going to explode if care is not taken. Now, some people's idea, understanding of education is that they want to westernize you. So don't put your son to school, to modern education. So we need a lot of things to do. Another part of the challenges we have is our population. What are we doing concerning our population? Some people understanding of the population is entirely different. It's not to say go to the world and multiply and whatever. No, but you have to have what you have to have what you call reasonable multiplication. Not just to start producing and not controlling and not training. Because when you start producing, producing, and then when you now have this kind of impression, this kind of perception, no, it is God that will feed them. Such a pedestrian reason. You have one wife. 
You cannot cater for the whole life. They now say, okay, yeah, let us add another life. Let's not know why, why we have to do that. No, it's, not, it's God that will provide. <laughs> and then there is another thing. He gets another thing. It is God that for, to, to, And then apart from those ones, even having some external concubines. <laughs> <laughs> it is God that will So we need to have some kind of attitudinal correction. So in other words, even our need, because you need to look at this is something that is coming into our socialization. <laughs> and then what we call agents of socialization. What are these agents of socialization? The first one is the family. How have you been able to now educate yourself within the family? And under the family angle, we have a nuclear family and the extended family. Now some of us are here. I know that. There are some of you that your extended family have sent messages to you to move the for. You have only one. You are paying for your son in the school. But you will now be there in the village. During our level of comparison, we should look at our kind of social cultural situation with other environments that are more affecting us in our own environments. Somebody will say, remember, I thought I sent you to school. But now look at what he's doing. So soft power can rest on the appeal of one idea or culture and depends largely on the persistence of free information that actor seeks to transmit. If a state can do this, it may need not to expand as much costly traditional economic or military resources that we can now do today. Using the idea of soft power, because this is what we now call you know battle at the intellect, uh, intellectual level. But that can only happen with the level of what? Education. Because if a level of education is done to that, then we will be able to understand all these things. It is a level of education. And then education is not only coming to the class or whatever. And I've told, mentioned about agent of socialization, starting with the family that I talked about. And apart from the family, then the other one is our, our, our church or mosques, religious leaders. The various kind of interpretation and misinterpretation being dished out in some of our worshiping area are also part of the causative factor of, uh, you know, affecting some of the challenges we are also facing in our various battles. It's time for vaccination and inoculation. Some people say, no, don't do that, don't do that. They have to reduce your population. <coughs> so a lot of things need to also go to correct that kind of perception. So the military, as far as I'm concerned, the armed forces is the pillar of the unity of this country. Because if we are to look at it from other actors, you see the way things are. And it is not easy. And I'm so happy when my brother from the police uh, mentioned and all that. No doubt about it. But that thing that I've come to realize that, and I want us to see how we can have that change of orientation. When officers start going to other environment. In your various commands that you earn, <clears throat> ask yourself, have you ever paid costly call to the commissioner of police in the state? Have you ever paid costly call to the immigration headquarters in the state? <coughs> have you ever paid costly call to the civil defense headquarters in the state? Have you ever paid costly call to the DSS or SSS office in the state. If we have not done that, see it as a KPI that when I go back, I will come up with a strategic action plan. If it is something that is clear. Because it is that kind of action that will lead to what? Interagency collaboration. So the collaboration should not just be haphazard, but rather strategic. It is not when something has happened, then they will start calling this person, oh, You'll be the first liner, you'll be the second liner, or no. all along they ought to have a what? That mutual understanding, that cohesion, that something that is there. And it is not when maybe your passport has expired, that's when you call the immigration officer. There should be something to look at it critically. So also the immigration people, once you are posted to any state as a new person, have that way of writing to the new, to the, to the military, to see how okay, we are coming this is a new person in the state. We are coming to pay constant call, call to the commandant of this battalion. We are coming to this place because that is why you are public relations officers. Some of you are members of uh, 
Uh, and I get the various characters. And once you are there uh, in those things, you meet at that angle, and this is how those things can get to those kind of situations. As a way of stimulating interagency collaboration. So in other words, it shouldn't be when there is a crisis. It is not when there is anything that will lead to that kind of... So it should be something that is already established, we are already in unity, we are in two ways, and so we we'll now look at it that way. So that from time to time, the director of army public relations can come to the director of police public relations so that we are here to have a chat with you people. The same thing with the naval information, we are here to have a chat with you people. So that kind of strategic action plan, having it, it could be quarterly, you are having it that way, so there will be that kind of sense of togetherness, that kind of, you know, harmony will be there. So I would want that kind of situation impossible for us to work towards that kind of development. The information dimension, the global information battle field, what we call the information space. The struggle for hearts and mind, threat of terrorism nationally and internationally, information is an asymmetric weapon or tool. Instruments of international power, national foreign policy objectives. Under the diplomacy, you have treaties, contracts, alliances, coercive diplomacy, threat of force, and threat of sanction. They are there. So how are we coordinating ourselves in those areas? Economic, trade agreements, military threat of force, combat. Kinetic power. And on that information, you can see how our own is left in there. Because if other people are here, you cannot see how our own is here. If you are in the police, public relations, or uh, uh, civil, wherever you are, you cannot see this that we are faced to battle with. Propaganda. Because some people are out to cause more confusion. The issue is this. Remember what I told you earlier? To start our major challenge in this country that most of us are not patriotic. If as a journalist, the focal point I should have in mind first is my country. Is my country. But how many of us think of our own country? When we are agents of some multinational or agents of somebody wanting to cause destabilization. In this other climb I'm telling you, how many things do you see being reported in Ghana that is negative? No. Are there no terrible things there? But if there are terrible things that are happening in that part of the country, you see them, if it is something that affects the country, you see them spotlighting it. That is those countries that are involved. But you will never hear anything that in Ghana. But if you hear maybe Nigeria is also area did this. So how many of us? When I look at the team, I really, I thought I would need some journalists here, but they are not here. Because I earlier thought they are bloggers and all that. Because our challenges is those characters. I hope they are here. Yeah, they are here. Thank you very much. So if you listen to what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> bloggers. Let me make it clear to you. Once there is no peace and stability, you won't be blogging anything. No, I'm not trying to make it clear to you. But he's not saying it's clear. I hope I, I get what I'm saying. So your concern should be, are you an agent that promotes unity, stability in the country, that you are a reference point? When people make statements and say, zoo nation, Zoodies. You are saying Zoodies. Where are you coming from? <laughs> that, uh, in the zoo, don't be in the zoo, zoo, zoo. When you try to ridicule your own in an environment, what do you think you are doing? Ridiculing yourself. So even if there is any issue, there are ways of handling issues. There are various forums, at the local forums, formal or informal forums, that you can discuss your grievances. But what we see, 
But that tells you our cultural orientations. And I know that some people are not happy at all. It's not because you have the money that you do that. So it is very, very important we take note of some of these things as we move on in our society. So you can see our propaganda, perception management, public diplomacy, cultural diplomacy, international broadcasting. There are some people, foreign correspondents that are there, they are noted for reporting things negative. When there is something positive, you will never see them reporting. So you begin to wonder. Because that is what their own payers want them to do. But you need to understand that whatever your payer is asking you to do, if you're in Nigeria, be thinking of your own country. Be thinking of your own country. So that's why I'm saying that what is lacking in our environment is patriotism. And that is eroding day by day. Coming back to our national uh, situation and all these things, Public affairs, through, uh, public information, media operations, media management, education, and other uh, cultural diplomacy, educational cultural ex exchanges. So we can also ask ourselves within our directorates and within our own battalion. In the various WASA group or maybe uh, those engagements that we do in the military, have we, uh, are there some kinds of you know, patriotic things that we try to inject? For people to understand. Because individual dignity is key. Zion. Battlefield consolidation, consolidation, nation building, peace support strategy. So we need to have a psychological operation for people to understand the need for us to believe in our country, to believe in our country, and have confidence in our country. Economic, political, diplomatic, and military. Now let me talk about the one that is uh, the political there. It's something that is a major issue and all that. It's not easy. It is indeed not easy. But what is expected is that people are aspiring for leadership. The, the political activities also affect your own operations. Now we are in August. National budget, has it been released? Yes. Even the other ones and all those that have been there. For your, your budget to be passed on, there are battles. Remember that those budget items that you have are not your personal items. They are not your personal items. They are your, that these are things you want to be done. But there are a lot of challenges before the passage of what you want. When you hear take a bow, easy take a bow. So you should know there are implications to easy take a bow. So, and that is the one reason why some of those things that you projected to be done may end up not being executed. So, it's very, very important, but I must make it very, very clear because under the current leadership of the armed forces, if there is any, we are not able to have the Nigerian Army University. That was not there before. So, I want you to look at this as report cards. We now have Admiralty University. That was not there before. So these are major maps. These are major maps. And so many military institutions and uh, that are there and as a result of other things that are coming. So it's very, very important. But what we have to try to cut hand is that as information officers, we should take cognizance of all this and see how we can effectively 
operate in such a way that uh, they are key in what we do. Evolution of those terminology. We have what uh, enemy or combat propaganda, political warfare in the UK, psychological warfare, psychological operations. And today where we are, we are now talking about what? Perception management. Perception management. Information operations, 96 to present, and today we are talking about perception management post 9-11. Perception. And then of course, strategic uh, community.